All right, so uh, we are given a problem here. So we're told that um, there was a car crash of some kind or something, or something happened with a car. And there are investigators on the scene and they notice that there are skid marks, right? So they notice there's a skid mark that's 200 feet long uh, that was created by a car. And uh, we're also told that when the driver hit the brake, uh, that slowed down the car. So it was a, there was a deceleration, a constant deceleration in the car of 16 feet per second. So um, squared, excuse me, per second squared. So these are what we told. And we're asked to find out how fast the car was going initially, right before or right when the driver started hitting the brakes. So um, the best thing to do in something like this, right, because it seems a little bit a little out of reach. So the best thing to do with this is start with the things that you know. What are you given? What can you figure out from what you know? So let's start with writing down what we know. So what we know here, uh, we do know the acceleration uh, throughout this whole process, which is constant here. Uh, it's negative 16 feet per second squared. We do know the distance traveled here, right? Uh, and because of that, we know our beginning position and our end position. We can call, uh, let's call position X. Let's say this is X naught and this is X one. Let's call our beginning position zero and our end position 200 just to make it a little easier. So we do know our, uh, our start and end position and position, that's a little sloppy, but that's all right. We have x naught, which we have up there equals zero, and we have x1 equals 200. We do know also our end velocity, our end velocity in this case, uh, because of course it stops at the end. So the end velocity, and we're gonna call the velocity here also v naught and v1, our end velocity is zero because it's not moving. All right, so we are given all of these things here. Uh, let's see, are we missing anything else? We have that, we have the acceleration, we have a start and end position. We can always look at more if we need, all right? Okay, so we are given acceleration. Now we do know that acceleration is the derivative of velocity, right? So in order to find velocity in this case, um, with respect to, to position, because it's a second, because this is all in, with respect to position, uh, then we can, use the integral in order to find that. So if we take the integral of the acceleration function, which is constant, which is minus 16, with respect to the position function, this is going to give us minus 16 x, right? plus some constant, where x here is our, um, uh, our position function here. All right, so fantastic. We have this here. So this is our velocity. So now we know what our end velocity is, and we also know what our end position is. So we have we have things we can fill in. So if we look at the end velocity, which is v1 here, and we use that as a, a reference with our end position, x1, we can plug this in. End velocity is 0, end position is 200. So when we figure this out, c ends up being 30 200, right? Great. So now we have a function here, which is our velocity or velocity function here, x plus 3200. So that's our velocity function. So now all we need to do is plug in the appropriate values to get what that velocity was in the beginning, right? So our vo beginning velocity our beginning position plus 3,200. Now our beginning position here is zero. So if we plug that in, we get zero plus 3,200, which means that our beginning velocity is 3,200 feet per second. That is our answer there. Now, uh, of course, if you look at this and um, it might seem very fast, which it is. It's extremely fast. Um, and if you look at this and you get a little bit worried, maybe this is the wrong answer because it doesn't look right. Just look at the problem again. Um, and this is what we kind of mentioned before. 200 feet is a very, very long, long, long skid mark. If you are 
constantly de decelerating at 15 feet per second squared, right? So if you're thinking about how long that is, that means you have to go extremely fast. Um, you'd be going extremely fast. And this ends up being something uh, upwards of 2,000 miles an hour or something like that. Um, if the question said 20 feet, you might get a more reasonable, uh, you know, answer here. But... Um, but yeah, so this makes sense here. And if you're worried or if you kind of, or if you also understand that the velocity here is a linear function, obviously because uh, because the speed is going to be going down constantly because the acceleration is constant. Um, and the velocity here, you can represent as a line. So if you graph this, for instance, and just to kind of check your answer, you can graph this uh, as a linear function. So if you think of something that has a minus 16 slope, and that slope, of course, is the acceleration, uh, which is minus 16. Um, and you want to figure out uh, if this here is correct, right? Because that's really what makes this 3200, right? So if you think about it, if you think about how we think about how uh, lines are, you can think about this this way. Uh, if you have x here, and what you want to do is you want the acceleration, because this is the, excuse me, if you want the velocity, if you want the velocity to be zero when 200 feet have passed. So you want this line to intersect here, where x equals zero, that you want that to intersect, excuse me, x equals zero, where y equals zero. You want to inter intersect that at x equals 200 because you want it to pass 200 feet right when it hits zero and if you do that then it's the same thing as doing this right when you figure all this out here and look at the y-intercept that's 3200 which means this is correct um so this is an interesting way if you wanted to like graph it just to double check your answer just to make sure it's correct all right there you go and good luck Thank you.